church say amen and amen. amen again it is a blessing to be here amen a blessing to be able to worship the lord yet again in spirit and in truth amen and amens again as me put my phone on silent if your phone is not on silent i just urge you to put it on silent or vibrate that we can eliminate that distraction during our worship service amen 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 now Four, four, four. <laughs> For the moment, let us turn our Bibles over to Exodus chapter 1. That is, again, Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. And we're going to examine verses 1 through 14. Now, all day people have been tempting me to go a little further in the text talk about a few things going on in our society I refuse to do so I refuse to do so now does that mean I won't do it that's not necessarily true but Exodus chapter 1 Exodus chapter 1 let's examine verses 1 through 14 you don't mind reading along with me the Bible says now these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob they came each one with his household, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the persons who came from the loins of Jacob were 70 in number, but Joseph was already in Egypt. Joseph died and all his brothers and all that generation. But the sons of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly and multiplied and became exceedingly mighty so that the land was filled with them. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal wisely with them or else they will multiply and in the event of war, they will also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land. So they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labor, and they built for Pharaoh storage cities, Pithom and Ramesses. But, not, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and the more they spread out, so that they were in dread of the sons of Israel. The Egyptians compelled the sons of Israel to labor rigorously, and they made their lives bitter with hard labor in mortar and bricks and at all kinds of labor in the field, all their labors which they rigorously imposed on them. Let all God's people say, Amen. Now this is Black History Month, and two weeks ago, we began looking at a series called The Slave Mentality. Um, though our, but, well, our focus is looking at those things that can enslave and be a detriment to our relationship with the Lord. And at the same time, those things affect our relationships with everybody that surrounds us. Two weeks ago, we looked at the money master and how sometimes you could get so caught up on money, it messes everything else up in your life. Amen. So this week we examine Israel and the Egyptian, a master and the Egyptians, a master and slave relationship that is well known among us. But are we certain of the slavery that took place? Hmm. If you would lend me your heart and ears to this thought, the mental master, the mental master. What we see here in the beginning of Exodus is the start of Israel's story in Egypt and what happened after they had been there for some time. We're all very familiar with how the Egyptians left Egypt after being in bondage for roughly 430 years. There are many movies that have been made about it, right? But what we examine today is before or right at the beginning of that 430 years. Examining the context in the first six verses, we're given a summary of who went to Egypt. Israel 
and all his sons but Joseph was already there and while he was there Joseph had children Genesis 46 and 27 says the same thing that verse uh, number 5 said already that that all of these people went and it was 67 in number but Joseph and Ephra Ephra Ephraim or Ephraim and uh, his other son is that Manasseh uh, were in thank you sir were in Egypt already so it was 70 that went into Egypt well the scripture in verse 7 says something interesting though and that is where we see a blessing in verse number 7 the Bible says but the sons of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly and multiplied and became became exceedingly mighty so that the land was filled with them God allows the people to increase and grow in number amen they were fruitful they had children they increased greatly some translations might say they swarmed that's how many children they had that they increased and spread in every direction and they multiplied and they became exceedingly mighty now that word mighty you see it in the text sometimes it says mighty and there's another word that goes with it but mighty is what most translations pick because it's not numerous it's that it was strong matter of fact <clears throat> they grew in Egypt hmm well we're familiar with the story of Joseph right when he went to Egypt and how he went through trial and tribulation but being in Egypt and going through trial and tribulation God blessed him and all of a sudden he was number two in all of Egypt uh huh so Egypt was blessed because of Joseph because God was with him mm -hmm. you go ahead and read Genesis it'll bless your life it'll bless your life as a matter of fact if you were to read Genesis 43 16 through 25 verse 23 in particular it seems that Joseph's influence was so great that when his brothers are there in verse 23 it would say that the, the one that the brothers they were fearful and the Egyptians said to him don't worry we fear God so the influence caused those even around Joseph to fear Jehovah you follow what I'm saying so so Egypt was blessed because of God's servant Joseph being there but in verse number eight, things changed. Because of a new pharaoh or a new king, there was no respect for Joseph or his people. He didn't know this pharaoh. Rather, he wasn't familiar with Joseph. This new king acted. Verse 10 would say, come and let us deal wisely or swiftly with them or else they will multiply and in the event of war, they will also join themselves to those who hate us and fight against us and depart from the land if y'all go with me turn over well I can't even say turn over it's just a chapter back in Genesis chapter 50 verses 24 and 25 the Bible points something out Joseph said to his brothers I am about to die but God will surely take care of you and bring you up from this land to the land which he promised an oath to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear Israel swear God will surely take care of you and you shall carry my bones up from here so the focus of the people they were just waiting for God to come and release them from Egypt bring them into that promised land amen so the people weren't intending to leave their dead in Egypt they were going to take them with them the Israelites were enjoying themselves and lived and took care of themselves. They were just waiting on God. But the new king refused to do research to see that it was one of those same Israelites that expanded the borders of Egypt. Hmm. It is fear that drove Pharaoh to have his people inflict the, afflict excuse me, the Israelites. Fear is a terrible thing. Amen. Because fear can make you do some ugly and despicable things like how Pharaoh is about to do in the text. Well, here's the point that I want to leave with you, or a point I want to leave with you. In Genesis 46, verses 31 through 34, the Bible records that Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, my brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds. 
for they have been keepers of livestock and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have and when Pharaoh or rather he's talking to his brothers when Pharaoh calls you and says what is your occupation you shall say be honest your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now both we and our fathers that you may live in the land of Goshen for every shepherd is loathsome to the Egyptians first thing I want to share shepherds were loathsome to the Egyptians well the, the details of this the Egyptians were distrustful of nomadic people especially shepherds because their money went with them what do you mean I have my livestock if I go over here my livestock go with me if I want to go over here my livestock go with me so if the Egyptians were in particular fearful of them because the people seemed nomadic they went from this place to this place and dwelt in tents so what they could do at a moment's notice is if somebody came to bring war to Egypt they could say we ain't fighting with Egypt why we're an independent state we ain't got nothing to do with y'all we just here chilling why you can't say you're going to take their money they got it it's their flocks y'all follow what I'm saying so they owned what they had it was theirs but Pharaoh was and the Egyptians were fearful so what they did was they put them in Goshen it was far enough from them so that these despicable foreigners as the Egyptians would refer to them weren't close now you should understand Egypt already had their own shepherds uh huh but it was because they didn't know these people and they came with their own income that they couldn't trust them Yo, that, does that make sense all right Second thing I want to uh, uh, point out is that Egypt is where it was happening. Mm -hmm. Egypt was the place to be. It was a hub. What you mean? Anything that went down happened in Egypt. If it wasn't happening in Egypt, it wasn't happening. You don't, you scarcely hear somebody say they want to make it in the music industry. That they're going to South Philly right nobody in the music industry said I'm gonna hit big and I'm gonna go to Jacksonville Florida nobody says this if you want to be big in the music industry where you go you go to New York if you want to be big in the oil industry where you go Texas if you want to be big in movies you go to Hollywood it's, it's just so Egypt was where it was at does that make sense so here it is <laughs> The reason why everybody was in Egypt was because a famine took place. Famine took place and everybody turned and said, we got to go to Egypt. Why? Because Egypt had money. Literally, Egypt had bread. So you go where the bread was. You went to Egypt and that's where the Israelites went. That's where everybody went. You read Genesis and study it. So when Pharaoh said, come, let us deal wisely with them or else they will multiply in the event of war while the details aren't given in of the execution it is reasonable to, to infer that the Egyptians with so much influence simply showed up in Goshen and then said hey come on time to work no 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 you come now and you work for me what that it was it was simply we just snatched them you follow what I'm saying it's reasonable that the, Egypt, that the Israelites even just followed suit, forgetting who they were. Mm -hmm. You see, it's very easy to forget the God they served because they were in Egypt seeing what the Egyptians had and they saw the gods that the Egyptians worshipped. This is why God had to produce ten plagues. Why? He had to reintroduce himself to the people. He had to show Egypt who he was and he had to show the people who he was by separating them. The plague of darkness was on Egypt. It wasn't in Goshen. The plague of the flies was in Egypt. It wasn't in Goshen. Now the water, that hit everywhere because he needed everybody to know who he was. Once they woke up, paid attention, now he said, like, okay, when this happened, the when he said, mark the lentils of your house, the doorpost, with this lamb's blood, he killed the firstborn of every child and every animal. Right? 
But Goshen was protect. He's making, he's showing them something. The reason he was patient for as long as he was patient with the Israelites after they got out of Egypt was because he's reintroducing himself to them. He's letting them know, I'm the one you depend on for everything. You depend on me to eat. You depend on me to drink. I need you to get that through. I'm the Lord, your God. That's why it was said. So does that make sense? Because he has to reintroduce himself. You see, the Egyptians did something that has been done over and over and even today. The Egyptians could not enslave the Israelites without first enslaving their minds. Once he caught the mind, the body just followed. What you mean? You can never truly enslave a person until you enslave the mind. You see, when the Israelites got caught up in the riches and wisdom of Egypt, it became easy to forget who they were. It also became easy to forget how strong they were. Look with me at verse number nine. The Bible says he said to his people, behold, the people of the sons of Israel are more and mightier than we. Another translation would say they're too many and too mighty for us. So here you had a people stronger than the Egyptians themselves. And they said, nah, we got to set something up over them. Now, Mervyn tried to tempt me in Sunday school to get me to go on a play. I won't go there. And then Brother Ron, he did the same thing. Trying to tempt me to go somewhere and talk about things in this here country. I'm not going to do that. But if I was, I would look at verse number 16, where it talks about now Pharaoh starts to inform the Hebrew midwives, kill off the males. Why? Because the power sat with the men. If I get the men out the way, I can control everything. Even today, if the men ain't in the picture, things are e Satan easily. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Households are jacked up because men ain't men. God, they knew where the power was. The power was with, no, 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 no. We need to get him out of the way. Because if we get them out of the way, then, then, then we can step in and, and, yeah, it's easy. Why? It's, it's true. Why? Why do you think Herod did the same thing? Herod, this, now this was typologically. This was a shadow of what was to come. But at the same time, why do you think, uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't need nobody thinking they deliver. Uh-uh, kill all. Mm-mm. And then you have few that said, no, we ain't finna do it. And that's how Moses got spared. And ironic, Joseph and Mary fled to Egypt. I ain't got time. I ain't got time, Lord. That's, 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 I ain't got time. Why talk about this? Church, has the same thing happened to you in the past? Think for a moment. Is the same thing, could possibly the same thing be happening to you right now? You doing well, you moving forward spiritually, and all of a sudden... I'm reminded of my homie. Before I get there, I don't want you to think that this is something that only happens to countries and nations. This is something that happens every day. People do it all the time. One of my good friends, I'm married. Two of my good friends from high school, they get married. I'm marrying them in July. <clears throat> and I distinctly remember my homie. He is going places. He's doing some great things. And he used to, he used to, he used to sip a little bit. Y'all know what I mean? We, we, we on the same page? Okay, okay. He used to drink, right? He, he used to do, he used to toke. Y'all know toke, you do, but I ain't got time, I ain't got time, I ain't got time, time. He used to smoke too. So, so they used to do these things and he started to clean himself up and started to say, I'm not doing this anymore. You know what? I need to get my life in order and applied for a job to be an officer with SEPTA, SEPTA police. And I'm like, boy, you're doing your thing. Did the test, was, was like number three in, out, of, out of like a, a few hundred. I'm like, he was doing his thing. So his old homies hit him up. Oh man, you doing your thing, boy. We need to celebrate. And what do you think they brought to him? The same stuff he cleaned up out of his life. Why? Because if he got better, then it would force them to look at themselves and say, we not doing good. And so out of fear and jealousy, they said, we got to tear him down. And the same thing happens spiritually. Go ahead, stop doing some of the things you used to do. 
and watch out some, some friends you ain't seen in 20, 30, 40 years. Pop out the world, hey, hey, you remember when we used to? I remember and I stopped. See, sometimes you got to, you, you know, God, God blessed us. Do you know how God blessed us? He gave us this thing. God was really working. He blessed us with this thing called a caller ID. <laughs> it's, it's a blessing. Why? And now, and now, if you got certain companies that pop up on your TV screen, sometimes you need to see a name, see a number, and be like, I'm not answering that. Because there are some people who want to hold you in a place of sin strongly. Don't want to let you out of it. They in it, and they like, no, no, no. You, nah, you've gone too far. I need to pull you back. But church, you, you, you got to look at the scripture. It says that, that, that Egypt represented sin. And the Israelites were more and were mightier than them. There's a reason, there's a reason why people, even in this day, want to hold us back. It is because they see how strong spiritually you are getting. And if you continue down the path, it will only show, well, who did you used to run with? I used to run with, well, but now I brought, why? So this hurt my heart when I was in grade school. I'm going to rest this here because this is an emotional story for me. I was in, a, it, wasn't, it ain't that emotional. I was uh, in fourth grade. And I remember I got an award. And I went to Catholic school, so they had a mass, and they were giving awards out before the end of the year. And I remember we went to the mass, and I got an award. Um, and the award says something about uh, continuing a standard of excellence. I didn't think I was going to get an award. They said, you've been continuing a standard of excellence. Like, I kept A's the whole time for like three, four years. I don't even remember what it was. They just did it all year, right? Because we went to the same school. Yeah, so it was just the whole year. So we got it a few times, but this time I didn't expect it because I thought I was slipping. You know, I wasn't up to my normal standard. And they said, Ken Spence. And I said, oh, I went up there. I was all happy. Like, I took a picture, went back to my seat. Everybody in that pew, oh, you think you somebody because you got an award. Oh, you kids are cruel. <laughs> You think you somebody because, oh, 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 you excellent now. You, you, can't, you can't hang with us no more. And they were just sitting there and talk. I went upstairs crying. Back to the classroom crying. Because I was like, why y'all, why y'all, why y'all say this about me? Now the next year, I was like, they gave it to me and they said the same thing. And I'm like, don't be mad at me because you suck. Now, now you can't say that spiritually. <laughs> you, you, you can't say that spiritually but follow what I'm saying sometimes you just got to look at folk and say Lord I'm going to just pray for you that you get to this place I'll help you get to this place but I'm not going to go back where you are and sometimes that, that, that blessed gift from God straight manna from heaven the caller ID mm -hmm, it just lets you know don't answer this phone ain't nothing but mess on the other line amen it's, now what is funny is that you know some of us we ain't grow up with call ID and there's some people who won't answer the phone they don't know the number but if you know the number sometimes you shouldn't answer it anyway amen Lord we, 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 we've got a long way to go in our spiritual walks it doesn't matter how old you are we've got a long way to go we've got a great way to go and you've got to realize who you are you've got to realize who you serve you've got to realize who your God is and realize that there are some people God is always sifting and sometimes God is sifting certain people right out from your circle of influence so that you can be everything you need to be amen and that's my message I want to leave with you amen there are some things in this world that are that will enslave you mentally to cripple you eternally but just like in that day that Moses was a deliverer, Jesus is a deliverer as well. Amen? And, the one, and he can deliver us from every situation that we deal with. Amen? So, so at this time, listen, if you're here, you're in need of prayer. 
your family in Christ. I see number of family in Christ, but if you're here, you're in need of prayer. Listen, you just remain standing. We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation and give you the opportunity. If you need prayer, let us pray together. Amen. If there is ever a place where strength spiritually should be, it should be in the church's house. Amen. 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 It's quite quiet, like Lord Jesus. I am. I'm just saying, but we ought to be able to come together. Amen. Let us together stand as we.